As a beginner in cybersecurity, have you ever wondered to yourself, hmm, maybe I should join a CTF? But at the same time, have you also wondered, hmm, what exactly is a CTF? If this sounds like you, then you've clicked on the right video. Today we'll be covering everything from what exactly is a CTF or a capture the flag, how to get started, what tools and skills should you be learning for CTFs, as well as an upcoming beginner-friendly CTF that is happening this month, and more on that later in this video. First off, let's start off with what a CTF actually is. Capture the Flag is essentially a cybersecurity competition with multiple different challenges in different cybersecurity domains. Typically, these challenges will be like security puzzles where you'll find some kind of flag, which is typically going to be some kind of text or code once you solve the challenge. Typically, you can join a CTF solo by yourself or you can join with a team, which is usually the most popular alternative and also makes it a lot more fun and interactive. There's typically also going to be some kind of leaderboard or scoreboard that shows which teams or players are ahead. And the top players are usually going to win some kind of prize from the organization that is hosting the CTF or Capture the Flag event. Now, every challenge is going to be a little bit different and may require you to use different cybersecurity tools, maybe even ones that you haven't used before. So because of this, CTFs are a really great way to fast pace your learning. And if you're someone who is interested in pen testing, red teaming, or any kind of offensive security role, for example, Maybe you've never used a tool like Bloodhound or Firmina, but as part of a CTF, you may have to use those tools for one specific challenge or part of a challenge that you're working on. This is one of the biggest reasons why CTFs are so great for beginners because there's so many different tools that you can touch that you may not typically use on a day-to-day -day basis. For a better definition of what the flags actually are, they are digital pieces of information or data that participants must find and extract from a target system, usually a vulnerable application or network to score points. Another thing to note is that CTFs typically have some kind of time limit. This could be 24 hours, it could be a weekend, it could be a week, depending on the organization that is hosting the CTF, as well as the level of the challenges. Some CTFs are more beginner friendly, while others may focus specifically on advanced challenges. CTFs also have very active communities. You can often find Discord channels, Facebook groups, Reddit groups, as well as other online and local communities who either do CTFs together or are just great resources to connect with. Here are a list of a few common tools that are used for CTFs. Again, this will highly vary depending on the type of challenges that you're working on, which we'll also be covering in this video. But a few popular tools include Nmap, any hex editors or binary converters, any networking tools like Wireshark, TCP dump, and ngrep, as well as Hashcat and Sneak. Nmap is an open source network scanning tool used to discover hosts and services on a network. It can be used by ethical hackers to gather information about network resources by scanning ports on single or multiple hosts. Hex editors and binary converters are tools used for working with binary data at a low level. These can allow you to view, edit, or manipulate binary data in a hexadecimal format. Using a hex editor, you can examine and edit binary files, including executables, system files, data files, burst engineer software or malware, as well as modify or repair corrupted files. Binary converters are a bit more simple and is a tool that converts data between binary, decimal, hexadecimal, and other numerical systems. You may find yourself using these tools when you're going through CCF challenges that may need to be converted to be able to be understood or read. Metasploit is another very popular tool and provides ethical hackers with a comprehensive suite of tools and resources for testing and evaluating the security of applications, computer systems, and networks. Metasploit is also open source and free to use, like many of the tools on this list, which is one of my favorite things about cybersecurity. Because so many tools are open source or have a free or community edition that you can use for personal projects, Wireshark, TCP Dump, and NGREP are three popular network monitoring and packet analysis tools used for capturing, analyzing, and inspecting network traffic. TCP dump and ngrep specifically are command line tools, so it's a great way to get some hands-on experience using the command line, especially if you're a beginner. Next up, Hashcat is another popular open source tool that is used for cracking password hashes. There are lots of different tools out there for this, so you can choose the best one for you. It can also be used by pen testers to assess the strength of passwords, but it's also a great tool to use in CCF challenges if you find yourself needing to crack a password hash. And last but not least, Sneak is a code scanning tool that helps you find security vulnerabilities and open source software issues in your code base and dependencies. So while it can be used for your personal code bases to detect and fix any vulnerabilities for you quickly and easily, it can also be used in CTFs where you can scan software, third-party libraries, any open source code, containers for vulnerabilities that you can then exploit to complete the CTF challenge. Sneak also happens to be hosting a free virtual capture the flag hosted with fellow YouTuber John Hammond. This CTF is called Fetch the Flag and it starts on October 27th at 9 a.m. EST. The CTF will run for a full 24 hours until October 28th, so you can play for as long or as little as you like. 
as well as something additional to add onto your resume. There will be 30 challenges across various security domains, including web security, cloud security, and binary exploitation. Plus, the top three scoring teams will win a Nintendo Switch. Again, this CTF is completely free and it's also very beginner friendly, especially if you're someone who maybe hasn't done a CTF before. This is a perfect one to start with, whether you're joining solo or with the team. It's for all levels of players with challenges ranging from beginner to advanced. Plus, if you are new to CTFs, join the CTF 101 workshop the week before on October 18th, where you'll solve practice challenges in a hands-on environment, plus get live support from experts so you'll be ready to compete on game day. Sneak CTF 101 workshop is a great way to warm up and get an idea of what kinds of challenges you'll expect to see during the CTF itself. It's a great way to get free hands-on training, so gather your CTF team and register using my link sneak.co slash CTF dash with Sandra. All right, so before you start the actual CTF, what actual software do you need? I would say the best place to start is probably to download Kali Linux. This will let you run Kali Linux straight from your device. Just make sure that you're allocating enough memory and disk space based on their system recommendations. You should always remember that any files that you download during a CTF challenge are very likely going to have malicious code. So you don't want to just download that onto your PC. And the most popular Linux distribution for ethical hackers is Kali Linux, which also happens to come with a lot of the tools that we talked about in this video, plus many more. The so Kali Linux is the operating system that you're installing and VirtualBox is the virtualization software that you're using to run the OS if you don't already have it installed. By the way, I'll link all the resources that I've mentioned in this video in the description below. So you guys can always check down there for any links or tools I mentioned in the video. And of course, if you're going to be using Linux, it'll also benefit you to be able to learn some basic command line tools, whether it's just navigating through the command line, creating files, deleting files, moving files, elevating your privileges, or getting the hang of using other tools that live on the command line. I don't expect you to memorize every single command on this list, but it's a great way to get comfortable using it or any real world scenarios that will require you to use the command line. And now we've come to the fun part, which is the types of CTF challenges. So like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there are lots of different types of challenges or categories that the security challenges can fall under. I can't cover every single one in this video, but a few popular ones include web security, cryptography, reverse engineering, and digital forensics. Web security is probably the one that you're most familiar with. This includes any vulnerabilities or exploits that are used specifically on web applications. A popular list would be any OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities. Cryptography challenges are usually designed around cryptographic techniques, algorithms, so you may be decrypting, analyzing, or manipulating any encrypted data or cryptographic puzzles. A few examples of these challenges include block ciphers, RSA, traditional cryptography like Caesar ciphers and substitution ciphers, or even dealing with digital signatures or hash functions. A reverse engineering challenge or an RE challenge is where the primary objective is to understand how a program or a binary works and then manipulating that program or binary file to go into some kind of loophole, spit out some secret data or passcode, uncover some hidden functionality, or maybe find a key specific piece of data inside the code itself, which may also be the flag that you're looking for. This one is also a fun one because RE challenges can be in various different coding languages, Python, C, Go. There are lots of different ways that these challenges can be set up, which can also make it a lot of fun for anyone who's new to RE challenges. And the last type of challenge we'll be talking about are forensics challenges, where you may be provided with some kind of evidence, like a memory dump or some network traffic or log files or multiple data sources, where you have to find some key piece of information to extract other clues or specifically a flag. This can also involve recovering deleted files, identifying any specific information, for example, a user or an action that was taken or a specific timestamp that an event occurred, and piecing that information together to help solve the CTF challenge. All right, so finally, we'll be covering the tips and tricks for beginners who are going through your first CTF. Your first CTF is always going to be the most memorable, so I highly recommend joining with the team, first of all, because even if everyone is a beginner, it makes it a lot more fun to be able to work through a problem together with another person or a group. And when you get stuck on a challenge, it makes it a little bit easier to help brainstorm and potential paths to move forward. But if you really get hard stuck on something, I find that it is helpful to just step away from the problem, maybe come back an hour or two later, and maybe take a breather or even focus on a different challenge because sometimes it can just take a fresh pair of eyes, especially if you've been staring or stuck at a problem for three or four hours. 
And as I mentioned earlier, when you're doing a CTF, you're likely going to have a lot of scenarios where you're using new tools or specifically looking for a tool that you're supposed to be using for the specific type of challenge. Obviously, not every CTF is going to tell you and spell out exactly what you have to do or what tools that you have to use to solve this problem. And that's why as you do more and more CTFs in the future, you'll have a toolkit of tools that you know about that you can potentially use to tackle a problem and you'll slowly be able to build on top of that. But in the beginning, it's going to be a lot of trial and error for the tools that you're using and which ones will be useful to you, which ones may not be that useful, but with the types of problems that you're working on. Oftentimes, CTF challenges, especially beginner level CTFs, will have a way for you to view hints and definitely don't be shy in using hints. I think they're a great way to move forward and using a hint to solve a challenge is better than just getting hard stuck on the problem forever. So definitely take advantage of the hints. They're there for you to use them. And after the CTF is over, a lot of times members of the CTF or the cybersecurity community may have write-ups for the CTF challenges that they completed and that's also a great way to see what other people are thinking when they're going about solving a CCF challenge so that in the future if you see something similar or maybe a way to use one of the applications you know to go back to it. And last but not least, of course, joining CTF groups and Discord channels, which by the way, our channel does have a Discord with a CTF channel if you guys are interested. CTF time is also a great resource for you to find ongoing CTFs and groups and CTF communities. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to sign up for Sneak's CTF 101 workshop as well as their Fresh the Flag CTF that is happening on October 27th starting at 9 a.m. Eastern. Hopefully this video was helpful to you and if you liked it, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Let me know if there are any other video topics you would like to see from me in the future and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!